This is the unboxing of Peli GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. It's part of the series called Building a Home Server based on AMD Ryzen 3900X CPU. If you want to see those, you can click on a link in the description below this video and it'll take you there. Now let's have a look what's inside the box. What you get inside the package is a graphics card, DVD with drivers and utilities, and a quick installation guide. Let's have a look at the graphics card. Let's have a look at the dimensions. The length of the card is 18.5 centimeters. That's including the ends of the heat pipes. Let's turn it to the other side. The height of the card is 14 centimeters. And the thickness is 3.9 centimeters. It's a dual slot solution. It has a black PCB. Under it, there is a base of the main heatsink, which is made of copper. It's connected to these two heat pipes, which are nickel plated, and which lead into the main heatsink, which is also nickel plated. It has plenty of fins, the heat dissipation area is large. There are no fans, so the cooler is completely passive. It has three ports, DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. The DVI port no longer includes the analog signal, so you'll have to use an active adapter. Maximum resolution is 2048 by 1536. HDMI is version 2.0b and it supports Ultra HD monitors up to 60 Hz. The display port is version 1.2 certified and 1.4 ready. It enables support for 4K displays up to 120 Hz, 5K displays up to 60 Hz and 8K displays also up to 60 Hz, but you'll have to use two cables. The GPU is based on Pascal architecture. It uses 14 nanometer process and has 3.3 billion transistors. The GPU based clock frequency is 1290 MHz with 1392 MHz boost. It has 4 GB of DDR5 memory. The modules are made by Micron and running at 1752 MHz, which is 7 GHz effectively. The memory bus is 128 bit. The card is PCI Express 3.0 compatible. The TDP is 75 watts, so it's powered only by one PCIe slot. There are no added 6 pin PCI Express connectors. And the thermal threshold is 97 degrees Celsius. The typical idle power draw is between 3 and 8 watts and the load is around uh, 60 watts when gaming. Let's talk about the real life experience. The idle temperature is dependent on cooling of the case because the card is completely passive. In a moderately cooled mid tower case with 220 mm fans running below 1000 rpm, the idle temperature is around 35 degrees Celsius at ambient temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. When under load during gaming, it gets up to 75 degrees Celsius and it's possible to overclock it, but I really wouldn't recommend it because 
the performance increase isn't worth it and you will need an additional cooling which would defeat the purpose of having a passively cool GPU. When playing a 4K Blu-ray movie using MedVR, the GPU is loaded around 46% during intense scenes with higher bitrate and it reaches up to 47 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of playback and it stays around the temperature for the rest of the playback. When playing a YouTube 4K video at full screen in Firefox, the load is around 19% and the temperature stays around 36 degrees Celsius. Through the whole time, the card is completely inaudible and the dual monitor setup works without any problems. The GTX 1650 is on the way, which will likely be 30% faster than this one. It's highly likely that the price will go down. I actually bought this one because I got a good deal for it. I think it's an ideal card for uh, HTPC or for anybody who really needs a quiet PC and doesn't care about the gaming performance. If you want to see this graphics card used in a build, you can find the link in the description below this video and it will take you to another video where I'm using it to build a home server based on AMD Ryzen 3900X CPU. Thank you for watching, see you next time.